James Friend, you're the cinematographer for All Quiet on the Western Front, uh, a German language adaptation of the classic novel about World War I. Uh, and that's pretty unsparing in its depiction of the brutality of the war and trench warfare. Um, what, you know, what were your initial thoughts on how you wanted to capture that? Um, it's a very good question. I mean, we, we wanted it to be as realistic as humanly possible, and we wanted it to almost have a documentary um, approach, but not, not necessarily in the photography, but in the kind of overall filmmaking. We wanted everything to feel as authentic as possible. So even when selecting the location, selecting the time of year that we even shot, um, we, we selected, uh, you know, uh, um, the, the, the winter months um, for, for beautiful light, but also, um, you know, the, the breath is real, the, uh, the environment is as real as you possibly can get. And um, yeah, I think just, the, just really hammering home the sort of authenticity of it all. And, you know, from a, from a, a cinematography perspective, we did want to, you know, move the audience through that space uh, as if you were a, a, a soldier and one of this sort of band of, of brothers on the, on the battlefield. And uh, yeah, move the audience, you know, through the, through the explosions, through the gunfire, through the, um, through the horror of it all really. Uh, and there are a lot of those, uh, you know, combat scenes where the camera is moving uh, through the action. It's very kinetic. Uh, is it as physically demanding as it looks like it might be? Um, it was, well, it was a lot more physically demanding than it actually looks because when um, I was actually watching a behind the scenes video the other day and the the screaming and shouting and the the, the running with the camera with the, with the stable eye rig um, looked... Um, looks so aggressive um and then when it obviously is translated onto the screen for all the kind of uh the the magic of technology and um and what the cameras can do and the gimbals can do it it looks um it looks like a sort of dolly shot really so um actually it's that it's that classic uh sort of swan up top and um you know beautiful up top and below the surface everything's just moving a uh, sort of a thousand miles an hour so yeah it, it was it was an extremely challenging shoot to say the least but it made it all really um sort of taste better in the end you know what i mean it's it's uh i i look back and i don't think i would have changed any element of it you know but the but it was it was by far the most challenging uh project of my career to date yeah and i and i i, I can't imagine um being uh, sort of challenge with something like that in the in the near future. You know, it was it was very very hard, but re really rewarding. It re I'm I'm immensely proud of of the crew and the cast and everyone involved because it was it was true collaboration in my in my mind. You know, it was it was really for me it was what the filmmaking is sort of all about. You know. And uh, for, you know, for especially like long, you know, tracking shots, like how much, you know, in advance planning has to go into that? It seems like, you know, everything has to be like this well-oiled machine by the time the camera starts rolling. Yeah, yeah. My, the director myself um, shot listed and storyboarded the entire um, battle scenes, every single battle scene in a, in a, um, in a hotel room in Berlin. And um and it was right during the sort of height of lockdown. So there was no distractions. There was nothing to do. It was just simply just nose to the grindstone and work. And, um, and yeah, we, we were pretty kind of forensic on our planning. I mean, uh, you know, we, we were coming up with these shots even before we had a set, knowing that because we were going to construct the sets in, in the, 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 um, the airfield where we shot it, we could, we could kind of tailor... Uh, the, the the trenches and things like that to our own requirements. So uh, even though the design team had a plan um, of what they wanted it to look like, we then got involved and um, yeah, sort of amended it to, to fit our, our our purposes. But um, yeah, it was it, it, everything was sort of to the absolute detail storyboarded and and shot listed and. Um, and it was it was it wasn't really the way I, I was used to working, but um, but I'm really glad we did it because we we had we 
we had to have no kind of uh, fat on our schedule or our budget. We we had to put every single penny on the screen, and um, even down to like the last you know explosion um, that we use for special effects when we um, we sort of tech viz the uh, uh, a lot of the battle scenes just on paper, um, and then and then I I would do it with a, a mobile phone uh, or an iPad. Um, and we would nominate where we wanted the explosions to go off at a certain timing, um, you know, and knowing that we had to get it right every, pretty much every time because the um, uh, because the uh, the special effects budget was kind of spiraling out of control as far as the number of uh, number of explosions and rounds we were getting through, blank rounds we were getting through. So we had to we had to be extremely conservative and very um, precise, um, and and yeah, the the camera moves we. We rehearsed the opening shot um, where um, uh, the the soldier climbs out the trench, and we had to do a, a handover with a technic crane, then out onto the battlefield and run with it with two grips as a seamless move without without cutting. Um, and you know, we designed this shot, and I didn't know if it was going to work. Actually, I was really scared. It worked on paper, it worked in principle, but until you actually can execute it you, you know it that it is going to work um i couldn't really kind of sleep and um and that was the only real shot that we had time to rehearse everything else we just built on that foundation knowing that right if we can do that shot and execute that shot then we can um we know that in theory and in principle everything else will work um and and it did but with that also comes other challenges like the uh, you know it was a very sunny day when we shot that scene and um because we were pr primarily looking east uh, and we wanted it to be backlit uh, we only had a window of kind of two and a half to three hours to get that shot and we must have done it i think i think it was about 13 times we managed to do it um and and it was a real kind of huddle for the crew and and yeah, we got it. We got it in one of the sort of final takes. And thank God for that, because yeah, um, we wouldn't have been able to shoot it later on because the sun would have been behind us. It was the opening scene. It would have looked not very nice, but also we would have been projecting a camera shadow uh, from the crane and from the camera and the grips because they are running in such close proximity on a wide lens with our actor. So we didn't have the luxury to just go back and reshoot it the, the next day or anything like that. We we were we were really kind of pulling out all the stops. And and take two was, you know, a, a big turnaround because we had to refill and reload all the air cannons, all the explosions again. And obviously the the actors were getting exhausted. So it was, you know, it it, it was an undertaking and a, a real learning experience as well. But as I say, I'm I am immensely proud of the of the final product. And was uh, was the weather uh, uh, like a really complex aspect? You know, in addition to the time of day, the sun position. Enormously, yeah. I mean, it was it. We I had a very sympathetic director to what I was trying to achieve. I wanted to shoot as much in overcast as possible or backlit. So we actually built the set. Um, south facing so we shot towards the French trench in the morning and then midday we shot south and then um, in the in the afternoon we shot towards the German trench which um, you know meant shooting really out of sequence um, and you know that and a lot some directors wouldn't do that you know because they they feel that it would impact the performances but um, Edward really respects my decisions and you know my proposal enough to sort of get on board with that and then obviously this intermittent weather um with you know we we shot in the in the sort of you know not particularly reliable months as far as you know <laughs> sunshine we i mean we, we actually had every single um every single type of, of weather on that battlefield during that sequence we had we had snow we had Sheet, huge sort of hailstorms. We had immense rain, um, you know, and it and it's that classic thing when it's raining. When we're doing the rain scenes and we put all the rain towers out, the, uh, the the sun comes out and it just kind of looks peculiar. So you're trying to then sort of combat that, and then other scenes um, that you might want a bit more optimistic. It's you know um, hammering down with rain. So 
so yeah, the, it was it was challenging. And when really when I sort of reflect on it all, um, you know, I I think we did everything in our power to 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 get the results that we that we did. But yeah, it's it you know working with natural light can be um, even though the, a lot of the film is lit. Oh my my. Uh... It's got very dark in here all the time. Sorry, <laughs> um, but yeah, it was it was very um, it, yeah. It, it, working with natural light can be equally as tricky as working in a in a in a studio environment. So yeah, it's I can imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I want to congratulate you on on the film uh, and uh, your work on it, uh, the incredibly arduous work on it, uh, and uh, thank you so much for joining me to talk about it. Thank you very much. Thank you.